Hi friends, so this video is on a species that I have kept, I'll just zoom out a little bit, I kept in the past and I really enjoyed, they're really different, they're really interesting, their care is not really the easiest to find out about online but they are still really beautiful and really unusual. So these are the hill stream loaches and I'm going to specifically talk about Suelia. So I have two examples here and I only just realised that I think one is male and one is female which is brilliant. So here I have, this is a less common species, it is critically endangered, they are wet specimens, they were not killed for the purpose of the video or to make wet specimens, they were just donated to me. And since in the past they had, there are no CITES related protections or any other related protections on this species. Um, generally it's the same for a lot of freshwater species. So if I get the female up, just to... So this is the, as I said, the hill stream loaches and this is Swellia brevoventralis. And I zoom in a bit more, they're quite small. There we go. So this is Suella bevoventralis. I would also be sort of talk about information that relate to the more common species, which is Suella linealata. You can see here they have this beautiful snake colour pattern as um, when they're alive. <laughs> so Suella bevoventralis was described uh, by Freehov and Serov. Ser in 2000 in ichthyological exploration of fresh waters so so this species is, i believe is found in i think is it vietnam or china i should have researched that but yeah they're found around there so swellia refers to the lieutenant uh, um, it's lieutenant colonel rb seymour swell who directed the Zoological Survey of India, so it's actually uh, based on someone's name. And Ventralis refers to a shorter pelvic fin, so if I zoom in a little bit, you'll be able to see a little bit more. So it's referring to this fin here and here, it's a paired fin, so there's two of them. So it's, oh, zoom in too far. So it refers to those being shorter, so these fins are 5 to 40% of the distance between the anal, um, an, anus and a. So it means short pelvic fin. 5 to 40% of the distance between the anus and anal fin origin. So that would be the anus is there and the anal fin origin is there. So I'm not really sure exactly but sometimes etymology can be a little bit more complex or weirder than we think and sometimes it's a bit more difficult to understand but there's some good websites um, out there that list it because sometimes it's really difficult to find out why a fish is named as it is. So these fish are found in very high velocity water on mountain streams. They are extremely dorsio ventrally depressed. If I just zoom in again, sorry. Zoom in all the way, just gonna against my hair, that's a contrasting colour now. There we go. So you can see how flat these fishes are. So well, yeah, I find a lot more flatter in body shape and spread out than others, but I'm not entirely like, I'm not the most familiar with loaches, and I, I've kept quite a few. I've kept these, uh, Suella Bobo Ventralis and um, Pangeo. So, these fish have very reduced resistance to the high velocity, high water flow that from the habitat they come from. And they're also suction cups, so this increases, um, well, decreases the resistance to the high flow. And when I say high flow, I don't think Laurel Cardo really entirely compares because these are hill streams, mountain streams, so their water's going down a long distance. The paired fins allow the fish to stick to the surface, so anyone that kept these will know that these fish are like suction cups, you cannot get them off. And you can see here, he's like a little, well, she's like a little suction cup and she will stick there. These 
adds really good suction. I'm not entirely sure how they get the suction. Maybe it's more about this area, but I find even the fins are difficult to get off. And once you've got the fins, it's not too bad. I doubt due to the flow rate, there'll be any sand um, in the area. And generally, because this will be carried downstream along with any sediment quite quickly. This means there will also be void of plants because their plants will need somewhere to root. And when we look at their habitat, it is literally bare rocks, um, waterfalls, and due to the flow rate, I assume these rocks will be polished and very smooth for the fish. Which I guess people do worry about these fish getting cut on um, sharp decor. But I get a tank sort of built of pebbles would be brilliant, loads of large and small pebbles. And I guess a very soft sand just to stop any sort of pebbles moving. The temperature of the water is around 20 to 24 degrees centigrade, so very cool. And this allows for a higher oxygen saturation. The flow rate of the water turns around increasing oxygen levels further. And this fish is extremely um, adaptive for high oxygen and struggles at low. So it does struggle at high temperatures. If we look, if I try and zoom in a bit further, no, that's as far as my phone it's going to take me. The gill slits are very small, so that it's not going to really allow the fish to take in, you know, extremely large amounts of oxygen. So, yeah, so these gill slits aren't going to be able to, you know, pump, ventilate loads of oxygen because they're naturally adapted for that amount of oxygen. And I assume the rest of the space of the body is used for other means. Um, if I get the male, the mare that I can just about see inside and the gills are quite small but I don't think it's going to show up on camera. So these hill streams are very clear water and just because it sinks in the rainforest so it's jungle it doesn't mean it's black water. This fish um, is very clear, reduced tannins, anything that's reaching the river is going very fast downstream. So. It allows for loads of growth of photosynthetic microbes such as algae, protozoa, bacteria, archaea I guess. And therefore this means that this fish is going to be feeding on those. So it is possible that my, um, non photosynthetic bacteria and protozoa would be present. But I can't imagine there would be as many just because there would be less nutrients that's being sent downstream quite quickly. There would be sort of very sort of raw nutrients I guess like the pure what the rock's made of. Um, so that might allow for chemotrophs so these are bacteria, um, other things that are eating chemicals rather than stuff that's eating animals so that's carnivores. Um, or, well autotrophs with um, make their own food, um, chemotrophs use chemicals, heterotrophs use a mixture I think, oh god I haven't done this in ages, um, but they will generally be feeding on what we know as Ulfwich, which is the bacterial films, uh, well the films that of bacteria, algae, generally phyto, um, periplankton, so they'll be growing on the surface due to the high uh, light levels and this fish is generally not adapted for coming off the surface anyway you can see his suction cup he's not going to be swimming around like tetra or something um, or in this case Vaspora danios I don't know really too much about Asian fishes uh, but I assume actually more danios or danios um, that's what they'd be would also be around in that habitat but they won't be feeding on the same thing. This fish is generally just si sitting there on the surface. So Suelia is actually territorial and it's generally due to anything with the same shape. So they will literally terrorise us almost anything that's in the same vicinity. And they do this by, I would say it's, co uh, I say it's co covering, whether one will just go like that on the other and just bother it and they do this to lower cards as well only lower cards which should probably work in that habitat is some che um, chetostoma, ketostoma which are um, the bulldogs, rubber nose oh they've got so many names 
but these they're, they're only ones that probably would work and so these guys will be a lot more total and they could get damaged by the old cards who are very sharp um donto sharp um fins etc so generally how to sex these fish and they are egg layers i'm not going to talk how to breed them i've never really researched it but here i have a male and a female so i've been showing the male the female the whole time so if I zoom in, I'll show you the easiest way to sex them. So here in my left hand, this is a female and the other one is a male. And you might, so I'm trying to zoom in. <laughs> there we go. So you might have worked out the difference already. The female here, she has a very rounded pectoral fins. Whereas the male, his are straighter, especially at the front, and the scales will be raised right at the top there. So this fish, they look kind of, well, they look almost like different species. I do find it takes a little bit of time for them to get this. You probably will see it on the other way around as well. There we go. And I find, well, this, They've got quite a lot of fatty growth. I don't know why. I can't remember how whether mine. It's been a while since I've owned this species, and you can see that's the sort of fatty growth there. I doubt there's anything to do it, but males will get more tubercles around the head, well, larger tubercles around the head and fins. And this I see in a lot of, um, well, I'm going to say cypriniforms, but stuff like goldfishes, carps, loaches. I've actually seen it in rainbow fishes. I, um, a lot of fishes actually display tubercles and it seems to be more common in males. I don't know if I'm seeing things and it's just me being silly, but yeah. So these are fascinating fishes. They do require a specialist setup. Um, and bear in mind there are quite a few different swellias. Um, they grow Generally, I would say this is about maximum for river ventrals, maybe slightly more actually. But spotted, I think, is it's one that's very similar, it's a lot larger and it's got spotted patterning rather than this beautiful snake skin. If I zoom in on the snake skin, because I don't know if I, I've even. This is why I actually kept the species, because if you look at. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Oh, it's got this lovely snakeskin pattern, which is why I kept the species. It, I think it's beautiful, and I like snakeskin. Um, I've got a pet snake anyway, but she's not got a beautiful snakeskin pattern. Um, but I think it's really nice, and it's a really nice example of something that's unusual, beautiful, active. And you probably will see, unlike a love lower curve. So, yeah, so this is probably a more of a brief introduction to Swellia not as detailed as it could be um, and they're an absolutely fascinating group of fishes I would say they're probably also feeding on a few invertebrates in there that will be feed, um, filter feeding so Bryzoa, they're a good example possibly Hydra, I don't really know so yeah, so these fish are absolutely stunning and I've just Male, female example, that's quite good actually. Anyway, thank you for watching.